Thank you for your patience. We just had a little technical difficulty, but it's been resolved. Okay, could you please join me in saluting the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, good evening everyone. Thank you for attending tonight's school committee meeting. We start off the meeting with um, the hearing of visitors, but before I do that, I just want, I've just been informed by our superintendent that today is uh, the National Teachers Day declared by the National Education Association. So, we would like to thank all of our teachers for doing a fine job and wish you a happy Teachers Day. I asked when the school committee day was, but she didn't have an answer for me, but you know, I guess every day is that, but um, so. Um, Thank you for doing such a great job with our children. We do have a visitor today who's really not a visitor. She's part of our team here at Brockton High School, Katie Balboni. Katie, would you please join us? Katie is a um, teacher here that specializes in mathematics and she also does a great job with sports as a coach. So Katie, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me today. Um, I'm down here to talk about Brockton High School field hockey. Um, I've spoken with Mr. Devin and Ms. Wolder, and I know they probably passed this information along to you, but I wanted to come down to you and talk to you personally and let you know how important it is to me and things that I've been doing to ensure that um, a adding a, my proposal is to add a freshman team here at the high school and to ensure to you that it's going to be successful. Um, it also says lines on the turf. I made the mistake of not calling Mr. Thomas first, apparently. <laughs> Call him first before you come here with a proposal. So um, if you can just look at the first part. I have a little bit of a graph and a table there, but the reason I would like to add a freshman team is we don't have a feeder program here at Brockton, so I've been doing my best to try and get some young girls involved. I offer free clinics in the spring. We're doing three um, this May on the 15th, 17th, 24th, and 31st. I have flyers. Many of you have daughters, 5th through 8th grade. <laughs> they can come down. I have all the equipment. I've accumulated enough so we can tell a kid, just come down, try it out. Even It doesn't matter if you didn't know how to play. Um, and so with that, I got 24 freshmen out. I did these clinics last year, and I got 24 four freshmen to play for me this fall. We made a, a makeshift team, we had three games, and it was an awesome experience. So I know that with that success, that if we are, have a full team this fall, um, with more games, I know I can guarantee we'll have kids out there. It's easy to tell freshmen, there's a freshman team, come and try it. And I think that it brings a lot of positives to the school. One is we have more kids involved after school, especially more girls um, doing sports and being act active after school. It gives them another set of eyes to, to look out for them in the hallways and care about them, um, about their grades, you know, what are you doing? So I just, I guess I wanted to let you know that I, I mean, this is not just a piece of paper in front of me. I've been putting my heart and soul into it. It means so much to me. And thank you for having me today. And I hope you consider, and maybe, I know tonight's a budget night, but if at some point um, you can see if we can make this work for our kids. Does anyone have any questions for me? Well, the, um, at the school shows me how much you care you know and how committed you are to you know the programs that you're involved with so we definitely appreciate it and um, we will we, you've given uh, information to all of us, right? Yeah. You have and the, um, <laughs> Mrs. Alves has it, so we'll make it um, a, discussion, a point of discussion at our finance subcommittee when we're dealing with the budget because we uh, unfortunately are going to have some budgetary concerns this year. So, um, But again, we really appreciate everything that you do, and uh, we know that you're committed to, to our students. So. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. Before you go, I yep. want to again, you and I have an opportunity to speak about field hockey. Um, and I will share with everybody, Katie makes a good point because when you don't have a feeder program, it becomes difficult to engage the girls, you know, freshmen, sophomore. And I will tell you back in 2003, community schools tried to put that into our Get Ready program. 
and for some reason we weren't successful in getting kids, it might be time to have that discussion with Maxine Richardson, the director of community schools. I should have told you, I already did. So I, <laughs> I went down and there is going to be a Brockton After Dark field hockey night this year for the first time. So, um, and that'll be Wednesday night, so that gives them a chance. And I also have to tell you, back in 2001, my daughter was a senior here at Brockton High School, and they brought back the field hockey team after a 20-year hiatus, I think it was. Yeah, it was. And I don't even think we had uniforms that were red and black, and we were just happy to have, I think they were hand-me-down uniforms. So you've come a long way. I thank you for your dedication, and uh, we'll look into this. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK. Uh, the next item uh, for everyone who knows is the consent agenda and if you don't know what the consent agenda is is our routine business and we uh, itemize it all and we approve it unless there is an item that a school committee member or the superintendent would like pulled out for further discussion so has everyone had a chance to review the consent agenda okay does anyone have an item to be removed for further discussion mrs. Clark Miss Ms. Clark. Ms. Clark. Ms. Clark, <laughs> sorry. Can I uh, to be Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mrs. Wilson. Oh. <laughs> oh okay. All right. All right. Uh, can we remove item C of the bid review subcommittee meeting? Wonderful. Do I have a second? Second. Mrs. Sullivan. A second on that, correct? Okay, great. So we will remove that. And then could we have a motion then to approve um, all but item C. So A, B, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, and L. Oh, okay. We will remove, you said G? G. G, okay. So motion to approve A, B, D, E, F, H, I, J, K, L. So moved. Second. Okay, any further discussion on those matters? All in favor? Okay. Okay. Ms. Clark, could you please tell us about bid review item C? Yes. Bid review item C is the uh, bid review subcommittee meeting, um, and we'd like to accept everything in the subcommittee meeting notes um, except for the Kennedy modular classrooms, which we'd like to table for future discussion. Um, there's some concern right now about the commitment of funds, uh, so we'd like to set that aside and approve everything else but the Kennedy modular classrooms. Great. Do I have a second on that? Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Excellent. Okay. Mrs. Solomon, item G. Um, I just wanted to point out that um, the community school has been working really hard on the Summerfest, which this year will be Saturday, August 16th from 10 to 4 at Brockton High School. You said, I'm sorry, the 16th? Uh, August 16th, yes. 10 to 4 at Brockton High School. Um, they're also um, looking for volunteers. Okay, and I also wanted to point out that their children's summer program offerings are posted on the Brockton Community Schools website. Um, there's a summer program brochure that's been very well done, detailing all programs for all ages for the summer, and that we thank um, Jocelyn Meek and the Community Schools for that. Great. Okay. Uh, any further discussion on that item? Okay. And of course, uh, those of you that haven't had the opportunity to go to Summerfest, it's a great collaboration with many community groups, our school groups. It is last year, thank goodness, the weather cooperated. It was probably the best day of the summer. So if you get an opportunity, get out there with your families and, uh, you know, a lot of fun for everyone. Great. Would you like to make the motion then to approve? I make the motion to approve the um, community school minutes. Okay. Second. Ms. Clark, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Wonderful. Well done, Mrs. Sullivan. Um, communications. My eyes are getting so bad. All right. Communications. Um, superintendent's report. Oh, I'm sorry. Communication. Request to use schools as polling locations for 2014 election cycle. Uh, we have a request as we do each year. Uh, we have a primary in September. Uh, the general election, it's a gubernatorial election, uh, excuse me, is in November. 
and um, you know we want to uh, be able to approve the use of our schools as polling places as has been done in the past. I will remind you that the November date schools are closed for the day. Yep. The primary schools are open. We will certainly work with uh, John McGeary and his staff, our school police officers. Um, we work with our principals to make sure the polling places are safe you know, for our children at points of entry. We'll make sure that we work with the principals uh, to assure the children's safety while it is open to the public. Um, for those members that have been on the school committee, this has been a uh, point of, um, I would say, contention. Um, Mrs. Joyce has raised the issue, Mr. Robinson has raised the issue, uh, child safety, student safety with respect to the traffic. Um, all of us who have gone to the polls have witnessed some rather bizarre driving habits for, from some people that just aren't familiar with the sites and they go there you know, once a year and they are, some people are driving in the wrong one way. Um, and we just wanted to try to avoid that. So when we did um, review the calendar for next year, that was something that um, we all raised. Uh, Mrs. Joyce, would you chime in on that? Because you've been advocating for that for a while. Well, I'm a little concerned about the primary class, the primary schools you mentioned are open. The day of the primary, the schools are opened in September. So we have the primary oh, election. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, I misunderstood you. Okay, so the, the day of the primary, the schools are open, but the day of the general election, they're closed. They're closed in yeah. November. We don't get the type of traffic for primary elections that we do for general elections, so it's going to be very difficult for us to be closed both days. Correct. You know, unfortunately. But if we can be closed on the day of the, the primary, I mean, the a general election, then it takes care of our safety issues. I think it works well with our calendar this year, too. From what I understand with the, the Jewish holidays, we, we have a little bit of flux this year. We're starting a little bit earlier next Labor school year, early. so it doesn't have such a negative impact next year as it has in the past. But safety is number one. And we're already talking about it. We'll work with our principals. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk of points of entry into the building. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at possibly, you know, parent volunteers, uh, people in the building to be at those points of entry to, to keep it as a checkpoint and, and make sure it's accessible to the public coming in to vote in a warm atmosphere. So we'll continue to, to work on that. And I definitely think that um, the parents who have volunteered for school functions, who have been quarried, properly quarried, mm -hmm. um, would be, if given uh, some advance notice, would be willing to help out at the school with respect to um, guiding and nudging people in the right direction and not down hallways, you know, mm -hmm. by accident, um, and placing people in the right place with respect to voting. Um, so we'll definitely all want to work together on that. Uh, anyone else Thank on that you. issue? Okay, great. Madam Superintendent, next item, report of Superintendent of Schools. Thank you. Uh, this evening, I'd like to start, as we always do, with our student representative, who I will say her attendance has been <laughs> exemplary. And we're pleased to have Jessica with us and to share with us what's happening at Brockton High School. Thank you. All right. Well, first, I'd like to start off with saying happy um, National Teacher Appreciation Week and Nurses Appreciation Week because I know all the teachers have been saying, oh, it's my week. So all our classes have been on the best behavior. So it's a thank whole you. Week. I know. Get a whole That's week. That's what everyone's saying in my classes. So, <laughs> so thank you for everything you, you guys do. For, for every teacher. I, I guess so. And yeah. Jessica just bailed us out. So again, thank you to our nurses. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, so um, on, we had a wonderful um, jazz concert on Saturday, so thank you to everyone who participated and came. It was a really nice concert, so that was wonderful. And in our fine arts, we have Harbor's One beautiful art display. When you walk in, it's all right there, and it's gorgeous. I love looking at it every morning. Um, let's see that. Last Friday was Brockton High's junior prom, and I know I had several friends who were there, and they said it was an absolutely amazing experience. And Ms. Wilder also shared with me that um, Shaw's, as well as the day, um, DJ's, um, said that Brockton students are the best, respectful, and cooperative. So thank you to all the juniors and everyone who was there. It's very nice. Um, 
Next Tuesday and Wednesday is a math MCAS for sophomores, so yay! <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, everyone's already saying get in your sleep, good breakfast, so get ready for that. Um, and the Drama Club will be presenting their musical Guys and Dolls um, May 16th, 17th, and 18th. So everyone is really excited about that. It's going to be an amazing performance. So we're looking forward to that. And the year is really coming to an end quickly. I can't believe it's already May. So there's a lot of um, senior award night is May 19th. I'm pretty sure if I read the handwriting. 21st, okay. Can't read the hand. I can't read my own handwriting. Um, senior award night is May 21st. Thank you. And yeah, so everything is coming to an end. But yes, yeah, so that's what happened in April production high. Well, we wish you good luck on uh, MCAS yeah. math. I'm sure you'll do us proud. Of course. I can uh, vote what uh, Jessica said about the prom my son attended. His dad naturally did not attend as a chaperone. Uh, I wouldn't do that to him. But uh, he said the same thing. It was fantastic. Everyone had fun. There was no, there were no incidents. Um, well behaved. Great time. And I um, uh, just it was a great event. Uh, the kids, I, I did uh, drop him off with his significant other, uh, and the kids just look fantastic. They just look wonderful, you know. So. Um, Allison McDonald, who helps out with Guys and Dolls, I was asking her, oh, how did you choose Guys and Dolls? Because we've done that over, and she said to me, because this year we have the voices for it. So there's, it's going to be quite the musical extravaganza. She says we have some strong singers, so I would um, urge everyone, if you can get to see Guys and Dolls on May 16th or 17th, or the 18th at uh, here in the auditorium, please attend. It'll be a great event. Good. Thank you, Jess. Uh, next on the agenda is a uh, recognition of a donation to our PLUF uh, Academy. And I'd like to invite uh, Principal Michelle Nezrella to share with us uh, some facts and uh, interesting information about this donation. Good evening, Superintendent Smith, Vice Chair, Mr. Minicello, members of the school committee. Thank you for allowing me the time to come in here and introduce to you, it's certainly with a great deal of pride and my honor, to introduce Mr. Stephen Prone. He is the trustee of the Prone Family Foundation, and over the past three years, he has made a total of $19,000 donation to Plouffe Academy. The money's being used for field trips, for purchases of chairs, to make our auditorium a little bit more comfortable for evening and um, afternoon events for our parents, for our students. His monies have also supported field trips outside of the school community. Our students have benefited. Our staff has benefited. I know that he's most interested in continuing a working relationship with Brockton Public Schools, especially through the Dollars for Scholars program. He's working now with Superintendent Smith and members of of her development and grant um, team to grow that program and um, he does have an operating budget of over six hundred thousand dollars of course we're interested in that too <laughs> uh, my pleasure my honor mr. Stephen prone Well, we certainly appreciate your generosity, Mr. Prone. Um, there are um, there are plenty of people that love to donate to the Brockton Public Schools, but certainly not many with uh, the numbers that you have provided us with. We really appreciate everything you're doing and would love to continue to work with you. Everybody in Stoughton loves me, you know why? They don't know me. <laughs> Steve, it's been a pleasure, and uh, we appreciate everything that you're doing for our students in Brockton, uh, some of the neediest students, and uh, our families certainly appreciate this kind of, kind of support. Okay. From a Spellman person, thank you, Kathy. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you. Um, with, um, with our student population and the needs of some of our families, um, Donations like that really make a huge difference to our school community, so we really do appreciate um, your efforts and your generosity, Mr. Prone. So thank you once again. Um, Madam Superintendent? Yes. 
Uh, I'd like to invite now uh, Dr. Ethan Cancel to come up and to share with us. Uh, many of you know we have been involved in the park field testing this year. This involves our Hancock School, it involves Raymond School, it involves Brockton High School, and it involves our uh, B.B. Russell School and Edison Academy. So we have uh, learned a lot of lessons. Uh, it's been an interesting year this year, and I'll let Dr. Cancel uh, talk to you a, a little bit about the park experience, and also to let all of you know, we do have uh, a subcommittee meeting coming up under a curriculum where we will be talking uh, at length about uh, park in the future. Do we have to move? Thank you very much. <clears throat> I had a very humbling experience tonight. I printed out what I was going to say, and I can't read it with my glasses on, so I therefore have my notes. Um, I'm here tonight to single out and praise three groups of people um, who really did extraordinary service to the Brockton Public Schools. One of the most important findings that I had in preparing for this was None of them really wanted to be singled out for praise. But I view my job to report, you know, as, as the person in charge of research and assessment, to report the facts to the school committee as I see them. So it's my job to report these facts that these folks actually were pretty happy to have, if I'd have just kept it quiet. But here we go. Superintendent Smith talked about the uh, the park field test. As you know, Massachusetts and other states are trying out the park assessment. It is our next generation assessment to replace the MCAS, possibly. And it really presented a challenge. It's a technology challenge because it's an online assessment. And it's also an assessment of the Common Core, which it's very uh, rigorous. And it's also technologically challenge challenging. It's very good. We learned a lot of lessons from it. And we also learned that it was extremely difficult to implement. The bugs aren't out of the system. It is new. We're doing the shakedown runs now. In the future, we're hoping it gets a lot uh, better. But because of that, as I said, it really required a lot of work. We, we do an awful lot of technology in the schools. We have a lot of online programs that a lot of students are part of. We do not experience this level of uh, difficulty and challenge requiring you know, hands-on touch. It was, um, it was a lot of work. But let me just get right into the heart of things. I wanted to thank two principals who had the uh, great pleasure and opportunity to host the park. And of course, they're sitting in opposite sides of the room. But we have Stephen Shaw strategically placed in back of me of the Hancock and Carol McGrath representing the Raymond School. Here's what's amazing about those two and their entire staff. We went in to do park, and I say we, it's just, you know, park, the state announced parks happening in your school. And rather than complaining about, and they had a lot to complain about, this was a very lengthy, all-encompassing, consuming activity. I said, okay. And we were, we were trying to train and teach people how to administer this test, which required a lot of work by teachers to do technical things. And we had no idea what the test would look like. They never announced it to us. We said, well, uh, I think it'll look, what is, oh, it looks like this. So that was, that was part of the challenge. But they rolled with it. They, they did their absolute best to put the best environment together they could for the students. There are no results, which is interesting, but it's also positive um, in the sense that there were a lot of technological glitches, not on our side, on Park's side. Park is also learning how to do this. The schools were just incredibly positive, and their, their concern was, how do we create the best environment for our students? And they're also, in, I, was, I was there every single day in, in both the schools. You could, you could actually see the wheels rolling in the, in the teachers' heads. If this is what the assessments are going to look like in the future, what do I have to do in my classrooms? You could see it happening. I want to thank you again, Carol and Stephen. Could not have been more positive. The entire staff, thank you to the uh, both staffs. As I mentioned, the, oh. <laughs> the 
the technology department. This was, as I said, it was a great opportunity for us to, to see how our infrastructure would hold up. This was just a field test. We didn't have every single uh, school in the district doing it, but unlike most districts in Massachusetts, we had every student in the tested grades in these two schools taking the test. And that, that was very different from one class here taking it, one class there. It puts different stresses on the system, and so it was great that we sort of had that stress test. That said, it was much more challenging than we anticipated because the test itself was so buggy. We would have kids being tossed out and tossed out and we kept testing and testing. It wasn't on our side. But I really, I asked Dan Vigent, who's the director of technology, I said, Dan, you know, who, who should I really single out for praise? He said, Ethan, you have to single out the entire department. And here's his logic on this one. There were four people who were dedicated full time to this project. So they were in the schools in the morning, in the night, fixing it, getting the tablets, 200 tablets. You have to touch each device to get the right operating system, to get the right update, because the day before the testing, they announce a new update and a fix. It was just crazy. So he said, when those four people are spending all their time in these schools supporting Park, the other folks are picking up all their work, the work doesn't go away. So I personally need to thank Neil Fama and Rick Chang for helping me out with the whole getting the network started when no one, including Park, knew what we were doing. James Lofton and Bill Welch, who just, welcome to Brockton. You know, uh, here's the biggest test ever, and uh, good luck, it's real buggy. <laughs> we had Louise Pyrus, as I mentioned, you know, people are holding down the fort when everyone else is flat out doing park. Uh, Katie Buckley, just unbelievable support, and obviously Dan putting it all together. So thank you, technology department. It was a very heavy lift. We learned a lot. We really did. It was a very positive experience. Finally, I want to thank the... Uh, oh, I keep forgetting it. I'm trying to go quickly, and uh, as Heather Ronan will tell you, I'm a very slow speaker. <laughs> the Office of Teaching and Learning, also known in the uh, vernacular as the OTL crew, um, just an incredible group of women, and I can't thank them enough. Now this is, I independently heard the exact same thing from them. They said, Ethan, you know, we were just doing our job. And I said, okay, so when you were there all day, you know, helping us do trainings, helping the, the students and the teachers administer the test. Who was doing your work? And they said, well, I said, so when did you do your work? Oh, at night, over the weekend. You know, that, that's what these people do. They just work, and uh, it's incredible. The amount of effort that they put out, the amount of time they put out, and it was just, it's just an all hands on deck effort and um, one, as Steve Jobs would say, one more thing, I have to thank personally Dr. Heather Ronan. Um, she is our very own Park Fellow. There are not many fellows in the state, but she is one of them. She knows more about Park than anyone, including I think the Commissioner. <laughs> the thing that is most impressive what Heather did was she mastered the incredibly rare art of putting three hours of work into one hour. Now, that requires her to talk real fast, drive real fast, and do multiple things at the same time, and I do nothing but uh, annoy her for being slow. But she coordinated everything, and really, thank you so much for all the work you've done. I will be giving a much more in-depth, we'll, we'll say one big round of applause, I'll be giving a much more in-depth report to you next Tuesday to, to really um, get all of the facts out about what we actually uh, did with Park and what we learned. But I, I wanted just to say this, and I, I want to make this very, very clear. This sort of effort, they, you'll never hear it from any of these folks, the, the, the three groups of people. This is not nine to five work. It's not even close to it. The amount of effort they put in, I sent an email to Kathy, I couldn't believe it. That's what makes Brockton special. So thank you.
certainly echo those thanks to each and every one of you. Um, you know, it, there was not a day that went by that we didn't have communication, information coming down from the DESE, from Pearson. Um, it, it was pretty much an unbelievable endeavor and we are very, very proud of what Brockton was able to do. I'm also very proud of the parents. You heard talk all around of opting out. We don't really get, we don't get any results this year other than what we can take away from having field tested. Our parents stood by us, they supported us. I look forward to going to the Hancock and the Raymond uh, during their PAC meetings to certainly address uh, any parent feedback and, and find out what their thoughts were when the children went home and shared. Uh, it certainly couldn't have happened, uh, Dr. Kinsell, without your leadership. Uh, you took that on from the very beginning, uh, along with Deputy Superintendent Liz Barry, and uh, you know I am very, very hopeful when they choose uh, a new system, whether we stay with MCAS, whether we go into a park testing, which I think is the next generation of testing, and I see that coming fast and furiously. You know, thank you for all your efforts. Does anyone have questions for Dr. Cancel? Um, next Tuesday meeting, is that it? Yes. So we can kind of vet out some questions. I'm interested in what the plans are for next year, possibly. Sure. Okay. Thank you, Ethan. So Superintendent Smith did reference um, a curriculum sub meeting, and as Mrs. Joyce points out, it'll be next Tuesday, the 13th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think we over at the Arnon, Mrs. Alves, yes. at the Arnon School, um, seven or six o'clock meeting. So if anyone would like to learn a little bit more, it's certainly an open meeting. You're welcome to attend. Um, I was fortunate enough to visit the Hancock and witness uh, some of the testing firsthand. Mr. Shaw, who um, is the principal at the Hancock, did a terrific job. Um, I think he always gives credit to his staff, which um, was performing you know, just on all cylinders. Um, and what amazed me was, you know, I was really observing the children as well. And they were, they were intense in terms of really focusing. You didn't see anyone wandering off. I mean, they were focused on the tablets and, you know, doing what they needed to do, despite a few adults, you know, strange adults being in the back of the classroom nosing around. Um, but um, it, it was a good rollout, I think. Um, there were glitches, certainly, but there were glitches is um, with the system, so to speak, uh, the, the testing itself, not uh, not the implementation by the district. So um, it's going to be a challenge because um, you know, with that much technology required to um, test all students, I mean, it, it's just going to be incredible. And it's a, as we've discussed here with our school committee members and, and Superintendent Smith, it's a huge cost to try and provide every child that needs to take that test with tablets and or computers. Um, it's a huge challenge and it's one of those sort of unfunded mandates right now. It's sort of in limbo land, but um, these are the things that school districts, that get things that get imposed on school districts and you know, well how the heck, that sounds like a great idea, but how the heck are we gonna pay for it? I mean, so these are the things that, um, these are the things why we have superintendents now. <laughs> So. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Minicello. I will tell you, Friday, uh, I attended along with Dr. Cancel and Deputy Superintendent Barry, the urban superintendent's meeting, which focused on park. Uh, Commissioner Chester was there. He heard the debriefing. Our, uh, our experience was the same as other urban districts. Uh, the good news was, yesterday, we had an opportunity with a legislative luncheon to talk about some of our funding concerns. But one of the things, there is a technology bond out there uh, for the Senate right now, and we're very hopeful that if and when that is passed, it will help us to, to continue to move the district forward with uh, supporting some of our technology needs. Great. Thank you, Mr. Cancel, um, Dr. Cancel. One quick housekeeping note that was pointed out to me. Um, can Ray, could you make a motion to um, allow the election commission to use the schools as a polling location for the 2014 election cycle? Sure. Motion to approve using the um, the schools as polling locations for our 2014 election cycle. Second by someone. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? I don't want the mayor yelling at me for forgetting a detail. So okay. <laughs> 
And next is a presentation uh, by our Barrett Russell and Gilmore schools. I'll invite the two principals, uh, Principal Natalie Pohl and Dr. Helen Verga. Um, again, I go into these schools and you just can't help but smile. It's a contagious place. Uh, the children are learning. Uh, they're wonderful centers for our very littlest students in the district. And I feel very special about this presentation tonight because you will remember, Principal Paul, I got to take part during the pajama night with the and I loved it. <laughs> so. Thank you, Superintendent Smith, um, Vice Chair Mr. Minicello, school committee members for having us here to talk to you a little bit about the Jumpstart program that is happening now at our two schools. Two years ago, Ann Smith from the South Shore Conservatory of Music approached Suzanne Martin, uh, director of the Adult Learning Center, about getting into an urban district to do their Jumpstart program. They were working in Hull, but they really wanted to expand. So they started the program off at the Adult Learning Center with the preschool class there, and then Suzanne, because the early childhood people are a tight-knit bunch, sent them over to the Gilmore, and I met with Anne last year at this time, and she was very interested in expanding the program, bringing it to the Gilmore with four classrooms. Um, it would be a weekly program, and then it would be a visiting musician every month. In light of the Barrett Russell opening mm -hmm. in the fall, I sent them over to Natalie and said, let's also expand it there if we possibly could. So the program is now at the Gilmore and the Barrett Russell, and there's plans to try to expand it. It's a wonderful program, and Natalie has a slideshow that we can give you some more information about it. Is there anything I have to do special with this? <laughs> Maybe just oh, wake it up. I'm like, okay. <laughs> wake, wake it, it back up. <laughs> Uh, so yes, we, we did start our partnership with the conservatory this year, and um, right now we have it in, they only had funding because it's completely funded through the conservatory uh, for, for one class at the Barrett Russell, but we were able to squeak in two. Uh, so currently um, they are both in our structured English immersion uh, classrooms at the Barrett Russell, and as um, uh, Helen uh, said, we do have plans to expand it to all classrooms uh, at the Barrett Russell for next year. Uh, just some program objectives um, from the uh, Jump Starts uh, program. Students and families will gain access to early frequent exposures uh, to rich arts experiences. Um, students will demonstrate literacy skill acquisition through arts integrated curriculum designed to engage all learners. Uh, classroom teachers uh, will gain confidence in creating and executing arts integrated lesson plans. And then families will continue uh, this learning at home uh, and we'll tell, talk a little bit more about the musical pajama nights coming up. So there are three components. Uh, every week we have a conservatory specialist uh, that comes into the building and then monthly we have visiting musicians. Um, so that's the piece that takes, pla uh, takes place during the school day with the children. Um, our teachers email uh, lesson plans to the conservatory specialists and then they're choosing um, books that connect with uh, things that we're doing in the classroom uh, to enrich their, their experiences. And um, then there's a, a, a professional development piece for teachers and then there's the, the family piece as well. So there's three components that, uh, that come together. I, if, I don't know if this will play. Will this play? Um, yeah. I think we had a technical difficulty with this earlier. Um, oh, can you hear it? So in, in this clip, the, the visiting musician was, of course, a bassoonist. Um, our students in the REACH program were working on uh, farm animals, so uh, they were connecting uh, through song with, um, with things that they had been learning in the classroom as well. So we've had um, trombonist, we've, we've had um, keyboards, guitar. we've had guitar, we've had all, all kinds of different instruments coming in, and the kids are just fascinated. Uh, and they get to this, oftentimes there's a component where the kids will get to uh, play the instrument as well, so they and get very excited. It looks excited. a little different at the Gilmore than it does there, and at the Gilmore, it's um, inclusion classrooms that have the weekly reader, but it's uh, inclusion and the substantially separate 
um, classrooms that come together to have the visiting musician. And um, it's very interesting, and the halls are filled with music when they're there, and it's mm -hmm. a, just a wonderful experience. The children absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. Uh, this year we did um, a professional development uh, with the teachers, so we had a, a three-hour uh, workshop where conservatory specialists work with the teachers um, to empower them to integrate music and movement into their uh, into their own literacy uh, activities and build a repertoire of songs and chants that would be uh, engaging for all their students. And we used a, a variety of literature to um, to do that. And we have plans to um, purchase a, a resource kit that would be added to our literacy closet um, that would have books, it would have instruments and scarves and all kinds of things that teachers could use um, to kind of bring those strategies into their daily instruction. And then the last piece is the musical pajama nights. And through the um, BPS Innovators Grant this year, we were able to uh, fund three of them. And as you heard Superintendent Smith say, uh, she got to come to our first one. We were, we were doing the story, Bringing the Rain to Capiti Plain. And uh, so that night was filled with lots of um, African music and, and movement, and, um, the, and the parents loved it. Uh, we had about um, 15 children that night, and we were hoping that word will spread and it will, it will grow for for the next one. And just a few more pictures from the, from the Gilmore School. And I love the quote, one of the only activities that activates, stimulates, and uses the entire brain is music. And does anyone have any questions for us? Any questions? No? Well. Mr. Robinson. The next pajama night, we, we actually were supposed to have one in May, and there was a scheduling conflict with one of the specialists, so our next one will be, I believe it's June 3rd. Okay. So, Excellent. and I can, I can get that information out um, uh, to send that to all of you, if you'd like to stop by. And we have the, um, it's Tuesday mornings at the Barrett Russell for the conservatory specialists, if you ever want to come and see it in action in the classroom. And it's Thursdays at the Gilmore. Thank Do you, you have a special Winnie the Pooh here, a <laughs> set of pajamas you're planning to wear? <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I don't. Green and gold. I don't green and gold. Okay, oh, pajamas right. are oh. optional for the adults. Oh, gosh. He his, he's referring to his Packers pajamas. All right. We won't talk about that. <laughs> Anyone else? Mrs. Joyce. Seeing my own granddaughter uh, relate to music, it's the one thing that every child, no matter what their ability mm -hmm. levels or what, you know, where they are, it, it's just something that just, in, you know, inspires them and it just gets them moving and it's just the one thing that brings them all together and it's just so exciting when yeah, you can bring music into the classroom like that. Wonderful. What a fantastic program, I love it. It is. It's, we're very lucky to have it. And the visiting musicians are um, quite entertaining because they've never really performed, I don't think, in front of a group like ours. And uh, they have lots of different expectations. And um, one day Grant was there with his guitar and he was, um, I explained to him that who his you know, audience would be. And as I was walking by later on, I could hear, as I walked by, he said, uh, everybody, we're going to get in two lines. <laughs> Good luck with that, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, mm. and, and they had a great time. They just had a wonderful time. That's good. I love the program. Thanks for sharing yeah. it with us. Thank, Thank you. you. And uh, again, going back to your pajama night, it's great when you see little kids running into a school with their slippers, their Spider-Man pajamas, and their little bathrobes, and they were so proud to be, they really weren't sure about being in school with those pajamas, but they loved it. They did. So, a fun night. Thank and you for fun coming. fun families. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Clark? Ms. Joyce's sentiments, I think it's a great program, and anything that we can do to encourage learning and expand, especially I know with um, Helen's kids, it, it just brings in great joy into their lives and I think it's a fabulous thing and hopefully we can expand on it and bring it to other schools to help out other other groups of kids. Be a great thing. Good. Great. Thank you. Okay. Next
next item, introduction of administrative interns. So our administrative interns, which is always the highlight of our year, I'm going to invite uh, Dr. Kathleen Moran to come up and share with you, but I will tell you, and I had an opportunity to address the interns the first day of their administrative internship. They were all there, very happy and excited and looking forward to a great experience, and I will remind all of you that I was an administrative intern. So I'm very proud of that. It's one of your Grow Your Own programs. I'm looking out in the audience. I see Michelle. I see so many of you. Maxine, all of us, Laurie, we took part in the administrative internship program. So there's a lot to be said for what the Brockton Public Schools offers our teachers and our future administrators. Dr. Moran? Good evening. Thank you. Um, I have the great pleasure of introducing our 2014 administrative internship group. Um, this year we have 14 administrative interns. Um, which really speaks to the talent and the drive across the district of the educators and their interest in a program such as this and also getting a, a better view of what goes on outside of their own buildings. So I'm going to ask each one to stand as I introduce the person. Uh, the first administrative intern is Michelle Allman. She is the Champion High School math teacher. This year Michelle will be assigned to, thankfully, me and to um, June Saber, the principal of the Huntington School and executive director of learning and teaching pre-K to five. Thank you. Next we have Aga Barrett. She's a Brockton High School ESL teacher. Aga will be working with Soraya DeBarros, the director of the Parent Information Center. Tracy Shula Montero, Brockton High School social science teacher. She'll be working with Cynthia Burns, the interim principal of Champion High School. Next we have James Donito. Cliff Academy General Academic Bilingual Teacher. Jim will be working with Aldo Petronio, the Chief Budget Officer. Next we have Anna Christina Eastman, Gilmore School Special Education Pre-Kindergarten Teacher. Ms. Eastman will be assigned to two locations, the Office of, Turn Le the Office of Learning and Teaching and with Dr. Helen Verga at the Gilmore School. Next we have Gary Guillotto, Brockton High School Adjustment Counselor. Gary's assignments are with Barbara Lovell, the principal of the Ashfield School, and Jose Pinheiro, director of bilingual education K-12. Next we have Maria Lobo Andrade from the Pluff Academy, school adjustment counselor. Maria's assignments are with Dr. Clifford Murray, principal of West Middle School and executive director of learning and teaching 6 to 12, and Jose Pinheiro, director of bilingual education K-12. Next is George Lewis. Brockton High School Guidance Counselor. Mr. Lewis will be working with Carol McGrath, the principal of the Raymond School. Carolyn McKinnon, South Middle School Social Science, social, sorry, Science Social Studies teacher. Carolyn will be working in the Office of Learning and Teaching as well. Next is Lisa Mosley, Bilingual Department Citywide Language Assessment Specialist. Lisa will be working with Valerie Brower, the principal of the Brookfield School, and with Laurie Mason, director of special education. Kelly Domenko, Raymond School Title I teacher. Kelly will also be working in the Office of Learning and Teaching. Mary Beth O'Brien, Huntington School Expanded Learning, Ti Learning Time Facilitator. Mary Beth will be working in the Office of Learning and Teaching as well. Amanda Palmer, Angelo School Art Teacher. Amanda will be working with Dr. Kelly Silva, the principal of East Middle School. And finally, we have Adam St. Pierre. I'm sorry, Adam St. Peter. Angelo School Grade 3 teacher. Adam will be working with Ryan Powers, the principal of the Baker School. So welcome and thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Moran. And I'm sure you will all learn uh, quite a bit from your, we'll call them your mentors. Your, uh, in, from, we have great instruction and leadership here in Brockton, so I think it will only benefit you, um, benefit you all. You've been assigned to some very talented and gifted people. So. And I know many of you, and I know how gifted and talented you all are. So um, congratulations once again. Very good. And uh, next I'd like to invite um, Chief Budget Officer Aldo Petronio. 
do the introduction of our uh, FY15 budget. Do we want your intern, Mr. Donito, to present for you tonight, <laughs> Mr. Petronio? Sure, I'll hand the mic. Huh? He's, all, he's all said he can take over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, I'd like to report on the uh, fiscal 15-year budget we're preparing. Approximately about three weeks ago, the superintendent submitted what is considered the superintendent's budget to the school committee for the school committee's review. That budget is a budget that's prepared that um, doesn't look at the revenue side of the picture. That budget is what the superintendent feels the school system needs in order to run uh, for another full year. So in that is all of the additional requirements and benefits that they would like to see. Uh, uh, that budget is given to the school committee, which the school committee then will review and determine what we can afford to do and what we can't. But in order to get to that point, we have to uh, wait for an appropriation from the mayor. The mayor meets with the chief financial officer and prepares a budget for the entire city and gives every department an appropriation. And we're one of the departments that will, re that will receive an appropriation. So once we receive that figure from the, from the mayor, the school committee then looks at the overall budget and tries to get us balanced and adjusted with that figure. Um, the, uh, the, in, in most years, we always request more than we, we receive, and that's because there's always more that we can do. There's never a, a year where we say well, we can get by with less. So this year, the funding that we receive comes from Chapter 70 from the state. The state sets up guidelines on how much money should be spent in a district our size. This year, we were a little disappointed that that figure did not have the same amount of growth as it had last year. Last year, for about the same amount of students, a little over 400 that we increased, we received a little over $11 million in growth. This year, for pretty much the same number of students, 439 were within about 10 of last year, we received only 8.5 million. So we're about 2.5 million short of what we received last year for funding. So um, we're, once we receive the final budget from the mayor, we will then try to do what's necessary um, with the school committee to adjust our budget to meet those figures. So we'll be meeting again starting this Thursday and then routinely every uh, uh, couple times each week until we get a budget um, that is balanced um, that we feel that works within uh, the appropriation we receive from the mayor. And then uh, we'll have a public hearing and we'll, uh, we will await for the, the city council's final approval of all the budgets in the city. So that's where we stand at this point. And once again, uh, I will remind everybody, yesterday we had the opportunity, we had a number of city councilors present, uh, school committee members, we had uh, all our elected officials, our three representatives, uh, Senator Tom Kennedy uh, sent one of his aides, uh, and we very much shared a picture of concern about Chapter 70 funding in a district like ours, an urban district with high growth. Uh, we talked about, you know, opportunities for grants, we talked about decreasing increase in our Title I funds. We talked about unfunded mandates such as the large amount of money we pay for our homeless students. And our district does an excellent job, but it does become a burden on our school budget. Um, we talked about our technology needs. I thought it was an excellent meeting, very open dialogue. Um, I know how hard our legislators, our senator, uh, our city council, our school committee, I know how hard everybody is working. We will continue to do that that and as uh, Aldo Petronio just mentioned to you, you know, present a, a balanced budget. Um, I can't say I'm pleased with the numbers that we're seeing, but uh, we've certainly been through this before and we'll continue to look at every avenue for funding that we can. Anyone from the committee? Um, yesterday's uh, meeting with our legislative delegation, I think, is a is is a good exercise. It provides uh, an update for the legislators to know where we are at, um, what our needs are, what, where our growth is. Um, you know, special ed, uh, our ELL population continue to grow um, on an annual basis, and uh, naturally, it takes um, it takes more money money to educate uh, students that have specialized needs and we certainly need to let them know we, where we are at so that when they're up there listening to different bills, listening to different issues, um, they know what will affect us in a positive way and what will
will affect us potentially in a negative way. So that's why it's good for us to periodically meet with our delegation so they are aware of the state of the district. And we've made it clear what the state of the district is. Um, and um, they are all very, um, very open to you know our needs, and they are certainly working hard on our behalf. But um, these types of uh, periodical meetings, I think, benefit um, our student population, our community, because if we don't tell our legislators what what's going on and what we need, who is, you know? Right. And and we have um, we have in the last, I would say, seven six years, had a very good relationship with them um, and have you know periodic uh, reviews and talks and um, um, years ago there was very little communication but um, things have changed um, mrs. Joyce you know you were a veteran member of the school committee and um, you know I know you talked to our delegation you talked to you know mrs. Cronin mrs. Canavan and it's what we need to do every so often and so it's really great. We really do have that back and forth with them. It's a great relationship. So, so that's where we are with that. And, and can I say one other thing? One thing that we actually talked about, and I can't believe we're talking about this, don't forget Brockton's history and all of this with Ed Reform. When you talk about the McDuffie case back in 1993, brought about you know equity for our students in high needs district. And one of the things we talked about is it time again to take a look at that. If Chapter 70 is not working for us, you know, we as a district has, have always been front and center making sure that our children get what they need. So we'll continue to look at every avenue. Back in 1993 when that case was determined, um, we were always a gateway city, but the numbers and the needs are continually increasing. Um, we had some data yesterday presented to us, and it showed you know, the numbers, um, the percentage of um, our English language learners when I was here and, and graduated, and it was, it, it was something like, I think it was like 8%. But now it's close to you know 30 some odd percent. I mean, so that tells you that in that period of time. So so you can only imagine in 1993 when that formula was established. You know, we're now you know 11 some odd years beyond that. I mean, so um, my math wrong? 20. <laughs> yeah, what am I saying? I'm off by 10 years. Yeah, holy mackerel. <laughs> no wonder I'm an attorney, right? <laughs> um, so, uh, but I can divide a third. Isn't that funny? Um, but, um, <laughs> but I'm just saying, so, so when that case was established, we were a gateway city, but not like today. Things have changed so much that that formula is, has become antiquated. Mm -hmm. you know? And not only Brockton, you know, the Fall Rivers, the Lawrences, the Lowells, mm -hmm. these type of gateway cities. And, and you know, it might be time to relook at um, uh, a, a, a legal uh, option. So we shall see. Okay. Any other questions? Not on that issue, I don't believe. Okay. Uh, next yes, item: Superintendent's entry plan. Yeah, I think I have to get ready here. Okay. And um, the committee has a copy of. Plan. I can tell you that this was wonderful reading this weekend. I'm sure all of us went through it. So, Madam Superintendent. In your packet. tell you I am finally I'm excited to finally be at this point and I, I guess I can't believe that it's May 6th it has been um, <clears throat> kind of a whirlwind of a year um, it's been uh, challenging uh, it's been very interesting and there are too many people to thank for what you're going to see tonight but I want to clarify before I begin to talk a little bit you know about an entry plan 
So the information that you're going to get tonight is everything that was gathered from the time we began this process. Uh, and the process actually began, I was elected last March. Uh, soon after that, I brought together uh, during June what I call trusted advisors, uh, a group of people. We talked about what it was like to transition into a district and a district where the superintendent had been part of the district from the beginning of her career for 37 years. We decided to go with a little bit of a different process. Um, we also elected a chair. Our uh, elected chair was Richard Bath, former school committee member, uh, professor at LaSalle College, and uh, a good friend and, and confidant to me, certainly in this process. We came up with the idea of what we called, not necessarily an entry plan, in the beginning we called it a transition plan. All during the summer, we started to come up with uh, a structure. We came up with uh, different subgroups. We talked about questions that we would pose. And one of the key decisions that we made, it, when you talk about an entry plan, many times the superintendent is front and center with every group that they're speaking to entering into a superintendency. I decided I wanted to try a, a different avenue. And that avenue was, although I would very much be part of setting up all of these subcommittees, and I'll talk to you about that information this evening, I would not be present during the actual uh, subcommittees, I would have them headed by uh, what I call uh, internal and external stakeholders. I felt it would allow for the free flow of ideas, and I would concentrate on being out there working and uh, getting information from community groups, from parents in the community, the youth voice, and bringing all of that together would, would be what our entry plan is all about. I will tell the public out there that this is the finished product. This is certainly available uh, to anyone that would like to see it. Um, most of you, certainly all the school committee has this. And uh, it's, it's quite exhaustive. And again, when you talk about an entry plan, it is gathering feedback, ideas from not just our Brockton Public Schools administrators, our faculty, our staff, our students, and our parents. And it looks at our district's programs. It looks at our services. It looks at our organizational structure. We did engage the community, the business leaders, in conversations about what are our strengths in the district, what are our challenges, and what are our opportunities. And you will hear me talk about that at length tonight. When we get this information, one of the things that you will see is by before the end of June, before we start July 1st, we will have a three-year strategic plan for the district, which we are presently busy working on now with all of this information that we have gathered. You know, we're able to bring about uh, all constituencies to the table to work together now and in the future for the benefit of, of all our children. I included as many voices as possible, as I said, districts, school administrators, business leaders, college, university representatives, community stakeholders, including our parents, our elected officials, fire uh, police officials, students, and our uh, union officers. And I will also mention during this time, I have had two full day retreats with our school committee to also get their thoughts as we move the district forward with this entry planning. It was imperative to me to collect as much uh, in-depth information about every aspect of the school district. Whether it was through school leadership teams, new teachers, I listened to people's experiences, the challenges they faced, and their successes. One of the things I want to tell you is you have a staff that is dedicated, high energy, innovative, and they're all committed to going that extra mile to help our children succeed. As I mentioned, uh, when we had these school committee retreats, some of the things we looked at, we, and we, we brought together and made sure that our subcommittees would continue. You're bargaining with seven unions. We're looking at policy manuals. We're looking at facilities. We have now gone into interest-based bargaining, which we had a lengthy training with, with our Brockton Education Association. We held six listening tours, six evenings where I spent time in the district with over 450 parents that were willing to come out and share their feelings, the strengths of the district, the challenges, the weaknesses, the things that they felt we needed to keep at all costs, and those things that we needed to look at. 
I met with the PACs. I met with the Super PAC. I continued to meet with the Special Education PAC. I went to a number of Title I breakfasts to speak with parents. We met with the media outlets, WXBR, a number of opportunities to have interviews. I sat down with Steve Damish from the Enterprise, the Globe South reporters, and our Brockton uh, Community Access, our cable. The best thing I did was listen to the youth voice. To get out there, I have been to Brockton High School probably a total of four or five times. I continue to meet with our youth voice. It is a very interesting perspective of, of how they have seen their education in the Brockton Public Schools. Many of them are seniors, and they're still willing to put themselves out there and share better things for the students that come after them. I also went to many, many community events, and of course, the school committee continues to get what's called the superintendent snapshot each week. And I hope you will, you know, confer with me that there were many community events. Uh, I've had many speaking engagements. NAACP, Democratic City Committee. I recently was at the Shoop Gala, the Rotary Club, the Metro South Chamber of Commerce, uh, Bridgewater State University, the YMCA, mentor rallies, and much, much more. And with all of that, I was able to gather information about the feelings about our district. As I said, the timeline began during the summer. Come the fall, we uh, were able to, on I believe it was September 19th, we brought together all of our different groups and you'll see the key areas we focused on. Learning and teaching, culture and context, operations and finance, organizational efficiency and effectiveness, and the youth voice. These continued through, um, through all of the months uh, in no uh, November. We actually, the phone call came in October. During this process of entry planning, I received that phone call from the DESE, the told me our number was up and it was our turn to actually go through a district review. And we recently received uh, our findings from the district review. It is well over 100 pages. So again, during the entry finding with all of the information that we were gathering, we had the district review which took place uh, for a week in November a debriefing after that. We've continued to have dialogue with the uh, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. We take this very seriously, and this is part of all of the information that we're using as we're putting together our strategic plan for the district. Um, in looking at, uh, again, the timeline, you'll see up there the uh, the um, events that took place uh, on February 1st, we had the school committee retreat, and on the 26th was when we actually changed from a transition plan to a strategic planning. We have had three sessions. We have brought together over 35 of your administrators and your principals in the Brockton Public Schools who meet for either full days or half day retreats. We're working in smaller groups, and again, that will be the strategic plan that you will see before the end of June. So in looking uh, at our, I'm going to start with our culture and context team, and I'm going to uh, tell you that uh, Dr. Sal Tarasi and uh, Jose Pinheiro headed up this group, and we were looking at the organizational climate and culture and the impact on our instructional environment. Some of the strengths that came out were our alternative pathways we provide in the district, our support services, our effective partnerships with our community partners, and again, is much more extensive in the uh, entry plan. I'm just going to share with you a snapshot of some of the information we received. Some of the challenges under culture and context. We need to understand our students' cultures, the languages, their needs. We need to increase cultural competency and proficiency in our entire district. College and career readiness opportunities and pathways for our English language learners. We need to look at our SEI population and have equity in our schools. That's our structured English immersion classes. Assistance for our bilingual parents when they're registering and understanding all of the forms that are required before their students enter school. Some of the opportunities from this group. New regulations on student discipline are coming. Supports for new programs and alternative pathways. An induction program for our new teachers that will include cultural proficiency. And tonight when you were introduced to a number of our interns, they are already hard at work at providing a structure for that to happen. Excuse me. Professional development in areas for, in all, in these areas for all staff. 
English language classes for the parents of our English language learner students. There's nothing more important than a parent that is able to converse in English, be able to support their family, being able to support their student in the Brockton Public Schools. It makes for success for our students. Our student community service and volunteering. Volunteer opportunities with faith-based organizations, retired seniors, business organizations, and parents to support our schools. Under learning and teaching, with Deputy Superintendent Liz Barry and former Deputy Superintendent John Jerome heading up this committee. The committee, again, students having access to high quality instruction in an environment that prepares them for college and career. The strengths of our district. Alignment of our K-8 curriculum, uh, curriculum and assessment to the common core. District-wide focus on math instruction, increased math proficiency throughout the district. Middle school professional development expanded. English language arts teachers use, utilizing Common Core in our uh, classroom curriculum. Brockton High School students graduating with skills and knowledge to succeed in college and career. And core values, 21st century learning. Our challenges. Inability to invest in technology the past few years. An impediment to teachers' ability to teach 21st century skills and to prepare for PARC. Brockton High School, looking at the technology and our textbooks in classrooms, a challenge. Achievement gaps between groups needs to be reduced. Our SPED population, our English language learners, our high needs populations. Our opportunities. We are presently negotiating with our Brockton Education Association and we are reviewing our school calendar for professional development opportunities for our teachers. Looking at scheduling for common planning time throughout the district, that is an opportunity. Technology devices supporting learning. Time to define what is college and career in Brockton. Instructional technology expanded. We need to support and train our teachers in this area. Under organizational efficiency and effectiveness, uh, Dr. Kathleen Moran and Dr. Ethan Cancel. Identify organizational efficiencies to streamline operations and support our schools, our strengths. Communication from central office to site level leaders, our principals. We meet regularly, share information, ongoing initiatives. We talk about new programs. We talk about our challenges. Content area administrators that are highly skilled and share their knowledge. Our use of what we have for professional development time currently. Training, data review, curriculum destruction, and, excuse me, discussions. I think I need water. <laughs> Providing opportunities for educators. Our train the trainer model. Our challenges. Increase in enrollment necessitates additional staff and administrators, especially in bilingual, SPED, early childhood. More centralized support to ensure all schools, all levels, students can transition smoothly. Vertical articulation between our teachers, our administrators, from elementary to middle school to high school. Our human resources, they're dealing with extensive new initiatives. In our human resource office, we have ed evaluation going on. Baseline edge, web-based program coming on to support our uh, educator evaluation. New fingerprinting requirements, teacher recruitment, diversity of staff. Transitioning from the middle school to Brockton High School, we need to outreach to families. We need to be doing those open houses to make sure that we're there with the Spellmans, with the Southeastern Regional, with all the schools that share the best that they have to offer. We can certainly compete with the best we have to offer. Lack of uniformity in some of the programming in a number of our schools, our middle schools were mentioned. Our grants office needs to be broadened, include development, alumni support, train teacher leaders in buildings to write grants with our grants office to build capacity. And as you hear me speak, I know our school committee members are saying we've already supported some of these initiatives, and I thank you. Our community... <laughs> On that note, can I, can I take a drink? I don't want to take her on. <laughs> um, our communications office expanding to, to, to support our bilingual families.
Central Office needs to review all programs system-wide to decide on our, the effectiveness of those programs, make recommendations to teaching and learning, uh, a central inventory of our programs. If we find a program is working, what we do with showing results is possibly buy in bulk. Our instructional technology, not adequately staffed to service the needs of 21st century schools in the district, and I continually talk about the email I received at 3 o'clock in the morning from Dan Vigen in early November, panicking when Park was coming on board and reminding us that we needed to bring on a couple of more technicians that were promised. And thank goodness we were able to do that. You hear about the work that they were doing this past fall to provide us with that opportunity with Park. All change in this district must be justified by data. Our opportunities, leverage talent, outside groups, businesses, CEOs, review our organizational and financial structures, identify areas of cost savings, and our Metro South Chamber of Commerce has offered to sit with us and review some of these structures. And the one thing that you have heard me talk continually about is a facility master plan, a 20-year plan, a long-range vision, because as we continue to grow, we have very, very few spaces to put those very special children in those seats so we can educate them. Our operations and finance, Deputy Superintendent Thomas and Aldo Petronio, review the current status of operations and finance effectiveness of fiscal, human resource, facilities, communication, transportation, and informational technology functions. Our strengths. We are presently still recovering from budget cuts. Uh, at, especially at central uh, administration, we have uh, put together a couple of additional positions to support our teachers. Our grant writers, these are our strengths. Our principals and staff believe cur current budget process distributes money evenly. We're looking at a paperless system of documents where we can scan documents in rather than have paper, and this is something that presently is in progress. Cost savings, things such as rather than buying ink in bulk, and having the ink dry up, it's very, very costly. Looking at a system where, again, it's something we go online, you're able to put in what your needs are, less waste in the district. In technology, a strength, we have a new video conferencing system. Student technology internships, where we actually bring some of our students to do internships. Replacing traditional textbooks with computer-based information. In science, we have digital textbooks. And again, as a strength, what is mentioned, and you see this mentioned as a weakness previously. What was mentioned in this subcommittee was our facility master plan. It presently is in progress and RFP is out there and it's something that we'll be continuing to support. Our COPS and our REMS grants strengthen the safety factors in all our buildings. What are our challenges? Not adequately resourced to meet the needs of increased enrollment in bilingual and SPED populations, staffing, and space needs. Class size is too high. We have level three schools where this becomes a challenge. And when you look at some of the districts that we're competing against, and I've told you this, when Boston Magazine comes out, and you look at those number one, two, three, you look at those high-performing districts. What they have in classes in first grade are 15 students. Our classes are, are 24, some of them, 25, and we're hopeful that they won't go higher. That's very, very difficult to compete with one teacher in a classroom with that many students. Older facilities in need of repairs. We have new housing projects proposed in Brockton. The Boulders is almost finished. The Trinity Project is something that's happening in the city. And we welcome everyone. We welcome families. We welcome children. But that should tell us that, again, we have a need to make sure we can educate these students in 21st century classrooms. A challenge is our reliance on state funding on Chapter 70. We have a lag of 18 months in real time for funding. When we look at those large increases, sometimes between October 1st and the end of the school year, you could see close to another 100 to 200 youngsters that are in those classrooms with, again, money that wasn't counted in an October 1st report. Additional computers are our challenges. And when you look at an economic downturn, and just on the news last night, I'm not sure if you saw that we were number one in the state in foreclosures. We have a lot of families that are homeless, over 500 families. Again, I said this earlier, it presents a huge need, huge need in the district. We are prepared to provide for those families, but we need the support. Our opportunities, again, is, and I'm going to keep saying this as many times as I can, our facility master plan, professional development for our teachers and all staff, 
a review of Chapter 70 funding for bilingual and our special education students, recruitment strategies for teachers and all staff, incentives, looking at diversity, elementary staff, common planning time, funding from non-traditional sources, partnerships, collaborations. Our development office is already at work in looking at every dollar out there. How can we collaborate with other organizations in Brockton to bring uh, opportunities for our children? Our youth voice, our students' perspective on curriculum, extracurricular opportunities, facilities, and other youth issues, some of the strengths. They are so proud to be part of an award-winning high school at Brockton High School, just as proud as we are. That comes across clearly. They're proud to have opportunities with advanced placement classes, IB classes. They're proud of their Boxer Buddies pro program, supporting our special needs students, peers with peers. And nothing was more evident than last year when I did have the opportunity, Mr. Minicello, to attend the senior prom and to watch all those youngsters, you know, welcomed on the dance floor, sitting together together, having a good time together, a memory for a lifetime, and I thank those students for doing that. Our arts, our athletics, our music, our drama programs. Some of the challenges. Our students were very insightful. They were very serious. They talked to me about schedules of students, sometimes hampered their efforts to access a variety of courses, their electives. They're looking for counseling to support college and career choices, college admission support, financial aid. They talked about having one-on-one -on -one relationships with teachers as teacher advisors to support some of those decisions. They talked to me at length about us continually talking to you about MCAS, which is very important for Jessica as she prepares to take her MCAS, which again is defining for her for a graduation requirement. What they said to us was, once we get beyond that, we need to be looking at our SAT. Can we have preparation classes to make sure that we can compete with other students getting into uh, colleges? And I sat with our students a couple of weeks ago. So what you see happening now is the college acceptances are coming in. One young, young lady, and uh, Sharon, I probably won't have the right colleges, but she was accepted at three or four Ivy Leagues, one of them being Harvard. You know, it is just impressive where our students have opportunities to go and to continue to provide that kind of support for them to make sure they can be competitive and to have those advisors. They talked about a lack of technology and they talked about the textbooks and talked about not only were they woefully lacking, and when I say lacking, they were talking about copyrights with you know, the same textbooks two different years, and this is a struggle because when times get tough, what we end up doing is the most important thing for us is that teacher in the classroom in front of the students and technology suffers. You know, infrastructure to put together you know, textbooks and come up with a plan in the district. Opportunities, again, is looking at technology-based curriculum textbooks, which we've continued to do. The listening tour is where I had an opportunity to meet with the parents and the community members. And again, th this is coming from, uh, from parents sharing thoughts during uh, those listening tours, which again, when we go back to October, I believe we had six of those tours throughout the district. Uh, one where I, where I had interpreters with our Haitian parents, and I also had interpreters present with our Cape Verdean parents. And I I want to congratulate our Cape Verdean community. When I was at East Middle School, we had the largest number of parents that came out. They came out in droves. Over 150 of our, those parents came and shared their thoughts about the district. Some of the strengths they shared. Extracurricular at all levels. The two-way program at the George School. The TAG program. The relationship and the collaboration with Bridgewater State University. Support for youth with substance abuse problems. Safety in our schools trained police officers in our schools, the GREAT program. Our school committee's commitment and our school committee's desire to again bring on our emergency director to keep our schools safe. And uh, our uh, Brockton High School graduation that is inclusive of all children, our special education students and also a number of our pathway students during our Brockton High School graduation. Challenges. Our math scores, foreign language opportunities, Brockton High school schedules, limitation on course selections, informed decisions regarding high school opportunities, culture and language differences, feeling comfortable in our schools, our suspension policy, and students spending time out of school, our Cape Verdean students' opportunity to learn their own language. Our Brockton Public School website needs updating and support. 
and a wait list for after school programs and they're talking about the academic programs that we have. Opportunities. Support and advocacy centers for our special education and our bilingual parents. I'm happy to tell you as I sit here that we presently have a couple of spots. We will unveil next September an advocacy shared space with our special education parents and our bilingual parents. And they will be advocating for other parents in their centers. Our parent portal through Infinite Campus. We need to utilize that. We have it available. We need to talk about how we utilize that to start communicating with our parents through our parent portal. More programs for our autistic youngsters, our ASD population for social opportunities. An advisory committee where all cultures have a voice in the district. Support for youth and family workshops, examples such as the issues presently involving sexting and texting. We did have a workshop that we were going forward. We've had to, had to actually cancel it a number of times. We will continue to do that in the district. It's this Thursday? Oh my goodness. <laughs> It is this Thursday. Uh, so a message to parents, that is uh, May 8th. Community service being a part of a graduation requirement. Creation of a special education advisory council that advises our school committee on SPED issues in the district. I am currently working with Director Laurie Mason and that is something that will be happening. More opportunities for SPED in community schools and after school programs. And extended year opportunities, academic opportunities for our neediest students. We did have a parent and community survey, those of you looking at the book, although you look at that number and it's 27 and you say statistically, you know, does that make a difference? It does make a difference because that was an opportunity for those parents that could not be part of the actual listening tours to provide those same kind of comments as if they actually attended the listening tours. So although it's a small sample, I ask you to take a look at that. In closing, one of the things I want to share with you are when we talk about all of that information, what now happens is emerging themes. And these are the themes that we are working on as we are doing our strategic planning. These become your strategic objectives, your big focus for the district going forward. It also includes our district review and our entry planning. So our emerging themes, Brockton Public Schools must provide leadership teams the time and human and financial resources to implement the district's vision of what is a 21st century education. And you see again, common planning time for all instructional teams at all levels. Redesign school and district schedules to support learning and teaching. Create a system of professional development for all members of the Brockton Public Schools. And district-wide assessment system to inform our instructional practice. The full successful implementation of the new educator evaluation system. This will improve instruction. And you all know that we have to have 100% evaluated and we will have that done by this June 30th when we have to upload that information on the DESE uh, portal. Um, we're very confident. You know that we have put together an accelerated Edeval uh, plan headed by Edeval specialists, uh, Carrie Kopp, uh, Michelle Connors, uh, Dr. Moran, uh, Kim Gibson. This has truly been a collaboration that we are proud of this year. The system should also be utilized to include recruitment, induction, support, and development of a cadre of highly qualified administrators and educators. The increase in enrollment necessitates additional staff and administration to oversee growing populations, especially bilingual, special needs, and early childhood. Issues of equity and compliance. Early childhood learning is the key to long-term academic success, and again, my facilities master plan. If you look at 2010, our enrollment has grown by 1,600 students. 53% of the increase is in grades K to 5. They're not leaving us anytime soon. Our homeless students have increased by 30%. Our bilingual department has increased by 15%. The district has a critical need of increased technology and training or a need for increased in technology and training. Online assessments, park, digital curriculum, 21st century skills, estimated need for 11,000 new devices in five years, professional development for utilizing technology in the classroom, additional support personnel to maintain inventory and train our staff. And again, you look at that comment, our BHS students identified lack of technology is one of the biggest obstacles they face in preparing for college and career. 
What are our next steps? The development of our three-year Brockton Public Schools strategic plan, I told you that is in progress. We have already developed a new mission which we will be unveiling. A new vision, mission, core values, we're presently working on in our subgroups, our theory of action. We've identified our four big strategic objectives. Our groups are working under those objectives to identify strategic initi initiatives and key action steps that will be the marching orders of our district for the next three years. And in closing, in talking about our emerging themes, I want to highlight when I mentioned to you our district review and actually taking that into account in doing our strategic planning. I want to highlight that uh, many of the emerging themes identified from the work of our transition team with parents, students, school and community leaders, educators and st stakeholders was supported by the DESE district review. In other words, none of this was a surprise to us. Brockton Public School needs to provide leadership teams the time and human and financial resources to implement the district's vision again of what a 21st century education is. And just to highlight a couple of those notes from our district review. Curriculum and instruction. The district review stated instructional practices need to match the developmental and learning needs of the district's English language learners students with and students with disabilities were not consistent, consistently implemented throughout the school district. Our regularly scheduled con common planning time for all teachers to participate in organized and professional learning communities occurs inconsistently and infrequently. The assessment system is conceptually well designed and balanced. In classroom observation, the team found mixed evidence of well informed use of formative assessment. In human resources and professional development, despite the concerted efforts and committed intentions of many, professional development in the district suffers from limited central oversight and K-12 coordination, allocated time and resources, and formal teacher input and collaboration. We talked about the implementation of the state's new educator evaluation system. The increase in enrollment necessitates additional staff and administration to oversee the growing populations, especially bilingual special needs in early childhood. Their comment, fiscal and asset management. There is no long-term plan for capital needs with regard to building and equipment purchase, maintenance or changes in school enrollment. And lastly, the district has a critical need for increased technology and training. They talked about the use of instructional technologies in classroom was not sufficiently developed to support teaching and to enhance student learning. District-wide students had limited access to technology as an instructional tool. While I'm sharing with you some of the comments from the district review, I am very hopeful. I'm very hopeful that you have put together an excellent leadership team. You've put together staff. We have the people here that can marshal these orders forward. I am very excited to come to you in June and to unveil that strategic plan. And again, I thank you for this challenging, this opportunity, and this commitment that we will make those needed changes and uh, again, move our district forward in the Brockton Public Schools. Uh, any questions? Any questions from the committee? Well, I had an opportunity to read your plan over the weekend, in between the Bruins games, of course. But um, You had to mention that, Mr. Minicello? Yes, they're losing <laughs> two to nothing, right? Two to nothing, from what I'm told. Um, Was that good or bad? That's bad. Oh. They're losing. Um, <laughs> And you know a lot of what you have in here, you know, I think that many of us on the committee have observed, and, and certainly we're all in agreement. Um, technology is something that we've all been concerned with. You know, as mentioned previously to the audience, you know, our ELL population continues to grow. Um, our, you know, in order to, I think, provide real results with that population, with the special ed population, the class size, the facilities that we have, needs to be addressed. So I think, I think you have um, unanimity with respect to your committee. Um, so it's a matter of how we are going to do this together to move the district and the community, the school community forward. So I think we're all on board. It's just a matter of now we have to roll up our sleeves and figure out what the, you know, 
financial concerns and or budget we have, how we go about doing it efficiently. So, but I compliment you and I certainly compliment your um, team. This is a lot of work and uh, a lot of good people involved in this. Um, knowing that you do attend all of those different functions and organizations, um, I don't know when you have time to do this, but you always get it done. So. Thank, Thank you, you and I'm glad you mentioned the team. Um, I would be remiss if I, and I could certainly sit here all night if I were to thank everybody that took part in what has almost been a year-long event. Um, you know, I've mentioned Richard Bath, our chair, my wonderful team from the beginning, many from community schools, uh, Mary Beth McManus, who I worked with so many years ago, and you all know is a very special mentor to me. Uh, just came back from Florida. I am thrilled to have her back as we prepare the strategic plan and all of this was done in district this was not with consultants this is with your administrators your teams uh, Jocelyn Meek and Laurie Silva have been working you know many many hours putting together this booklet uh, I can't thank them enough um, there's just you know so much support I am very hopeful we will get this done this is Joyce Good job, uh, Kathy. This is very comprehensive. Um, the collaboration is evident throughout this entry plan. And um, what you've done is you've really tackled the issues head on. You've identified them. And there's no running away from things that are tough. And that's what's going to really get us through to where we need to be to be able to to service our, our students, all of our student populations. And I think you've done a fantastic job on this. I look forward to the next steps and, um, and going forward um, in June with, with how we're going to accomplish the goals. Uh, they're um, very, um, some, some of these are going to be really tough goals to accomplish. But if we don't identify them and um, stop making those steps, we'll never get there. So this is really great. And I appreciate you taking the time. and. Um, that's been evident in here and sharing this with us tonight. Thank you. Mr. Henningsen. And, uh, I just wanted to say uh, I, I want to thank you publicly for, for um, I would echo, you know, many sentiments that you said about, you know, attending various functions uh, and, and events, you know, where we're blessed to have uh, such an active superintendent that, that has really, you know, reached out to the community, the parents, the students, the community leaders, and, and, and all the stakeholders in this to, to gather their opinion on, on what we need as a district. And, and, and I thank you for all your hard work and the hard work that all your staff has, has done for us. Thank you. Thank you. I think in closing, I will mention to you, tomorrow is the uh, last day for this year uh, of my new superintendent induction program. Uh, when I tell you it's all day, we work all day. And I believe tonight in the audience uh, is my wonderful coach and mentor, uh, Dr. Jim Marini. Uh, and again, the new superintendent induction program is wonderful as far as supporting what is a strategy, what is a theory of action. And they are there to, to support your superintendent. You have 23 new superintendents in this state and their goal is to make sure that we are successful as a district and we are able to um, you know to support what needs to be supported in our district so thank you dr marini okay okay moving on Item, our items to refer to subcommittee. Is there anything, Mrs. Joyce? I'd just like to um, add to the agenda on our next finance subcommittee meeting this uh, initiative that's been brought forth by Ms. Balboni on the freshman um, freshman uh, field hockey team. I'd like to learn more about it and how, you know, learn more about the viability of the program and also about the fiscal uh, aspects of it as we go through the budget process to see if this is something that we can consider at this point. So 
I'd like to invite Ms. Balboni, if she can make it to that meeting, to or a representative that can give us those answers, um, so we can learn more about this initiative. Okay. Um, why don't we have Mr. Thomas consult with uh, Ms. Balboni, and maybe if you need Aldo involved as well, um, and then um, if. Um, you would like to come to our next finance subcommittee meeting or provide Mr. Thomas um, with the information, we will uh, certainly discuss that as a, an agenda item. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? No? Okay. Um, any unfinished business? No? Okay. Um, new business, the 2014-2015 Supplemental School Calendar, um, item number 21. Uh, One of the things uh, I will note is uh, in the Supplemental Calendar, we have an increase in a number of our professional development half days. At Brockton High School, we have two additional days next year. And at our elementary school level, uh, we have included three additional half days. Okay. And um, that would go to, obviously, the needs and the items that you outlined for us previously. Okay. I mean, just recently. We will be working, uh, Deputy Superintendent Liz Barry will be working with her team to put together a calendar of professional development. We'll share that with you so you have ahead of time what is happening in the district during those uh, professional development days. Okay. Okay, um, do we need to vote on that? To accept it, yes, or is this just a draft for us to review? Draft. Just a draft, okay. So we don't need to vote on it. All right, thank you. Okay, next item, report of the bid review subcommittee meeting, which was held this evening. Okay, so the bid review subcommittee met at 6.48 p.m. tonight. Present uh, were Ms. Alicia Clark, Mrs. Judy Sullivan, and myself. At that meeting, we discussed two items. We discussed um, awarding the bid with respect to the BHS Planetarium, and that was um, the company Spitz Planetarium. And Mr. Petronio pointed out as a point of interest that that was the company that originally installed the original planetarium oh. projector. So um, history repeats itself. So. And we also discussed at that time um, warehouse space with respect to our uh, facility maintenance department and our general warehousing due to the fact that the Cochrane building is being taken offline. Um, so we need a warehouse. Um, so those were the items discussed and I would like uh, someone to make a motion to accept the report of the subcommittee. Motion to accept the, excuse me, motion to accept the minutes of the bid review subcommittee. A second. second. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Okay. And then, with respect to that report, um, the Spitz Planetarium Company was the only company to um, respond to our bid and uh, Mr. Petronio did his due diligence and determined that that amount um, that they bid was in uh, in the realm of appropriateness um, for the, the project so we would like the committee to ratify our report um, and vote to award that contract to the Spitz Planetarium Company. Would someone like to make that motion? Ms. Ms. Clark, how about you? You're, you're the one I'm calling on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to approve the bid of the Spitz um, Planetarium project. To Spitz Planetarium Company? Okay, yes. perfect. Second? Second. Great. All in favor? Okay. And then the second item is to uh, award the bid with respect to the warehouse um, to the Foster Street facility due to the fact that um, I think all of us on the committee went and visited the two sites that were in contention and I think we all agreed um, that 
the Foster Street site was better suited um, and more economical. Um, and um, the bid review subcommittee voted to award that and I'm just asking for someone to make a motion to uh, ratify that uh, bid. How about you, Mrs. Sullivan? Motion to ratify the bid for the Foster Street property. Foster Street warehouse. Perfect. Okay, second. Thank you. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. That was uh, that was very much appreciated. Okay. Uh, next item: closing of the FY14 school budget. Uh, do we need Mr. Petronio for that? We've come to that time of year again where um, reviewing the spending that we have currently in the budget and looking forward to what I consider our pre-buying period for next year. I feel it's necessary to close the FY14 budget to all discretionary spending and only allow at this point anything that's been contracted um, or that's on a time payment such as you know electricity, gas, tuition bills um, from this point further. Um, any questions or further discussion from any of the committee members? No? Um, if there are sort of exigent circumstances and a principal needs to approach the administration, what is the process, Mr. Petronio? Process to send a request to myself, um, to uh, either deputy, um, you know, and we'll inform the superintendent of it, bring it up at our meeting and decide whether it's appropriate or not. Okay. Okay. Uh, does someone want to make a motion to close the FY14 budget? Motion to close the FY14 budget. Second. Thank you, Ray. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Any special matters that anyone would like to discuss or add for next time with the superintendent? Or anything to be added to the agendas, aside from naturally Mrs. Joyce's suggestion about the field hockey? No? Can I just make one more comment this evening? Sure. So Friday evening, I had the opportunity to uh, go to Massasoit Community College and see the production of The Wizard of Oz. And I grew up during a time when it was very, very different as far as there was no cable, there were very few stations, and the highlight of the year was when The Wizard of Oz came on TV. That was a big night. And to sit at uh, Massasoit Community College with one of our teachers in the music department, and I see uh, Maestro uh, Macrina up there, Jen Sterling, had students from the Baker School. There were 50 that performed last weekend. Another 50 will perform this week Weekend, they were the munchkins in the production. Hands down, fabulous, excellent. The kids were so excited. Um, it was, I, I loved it. I relived my childhood. Uh, it was, they even had a real toto. It was just, just great to see this. If you get an opportunity, please go and support those youngsters. Thank you to Jen. Thank you to Principal uh, Ryan Powers of the Baker School. Um, it's a community theater. We also had our uh, counselor at large, Shana Barnes, taking part in the community production. Ju just excellent. Great. Anyone else? Mr. Henningsen. I just wanted to uh, thank the uh, Fine Arts Cafe. Uh, yesterday we had a opportunity to meet with our state delegation and um, I wanted to thank the Fine Arts Cafe and the students for, for just putting on a, a, a great uh, luncheon. Um, it, it was just absolutely fantastic and, and for those out there, they're open on Thursdays and Fridays during lunch periods. Um, so come down and, and, and see what our, our kids can do. They, they're they're amazing. I mean, th I wish I could cook that good. Dr. Moran, I think you should take our administrative interns there for a field trip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess there's no objection to that. Um, <laughs> anyone else? Um, just for informational purposes, tomorrow evening at City Hall at 7 o'clock, there will be the, um, the joint uh, convention of the school committee and city council chaired by uh, the mayor who is the official moderator according to ordinance with respect to filling the Ward 6 school committee seat. Um, there are a number of candidates. 
um, candidates who um, have qualified uh, are invited, if they so choose, to come and speak uh, to the panel, basically addressing the panel. and if they feel like stating why they are interested and or provide any information they feel is relevant, um, they're free to do so. Um, it will be a short opportunity. It's not going to be a, um, a, 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 a great period of time. I'm not sure we'll decide tomorrow evening how many minutes people will have to speak, um, but um, that's what's going on at City Hall tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Um, and I believe we will choose someone tomorrow evening. So that's the plan as of right now. So anything else? How about a motion to adjourn? Okay, thank you for attending. All in favor? So adjourn. <laughs>